So the next neon zombie is up and she is looking quite orange and quite infected. Just a reminder that this is a part of a series I'm doing that I've put together specifically to cover a wide range of wound and general zombie related looks that are all very easy, inexpensive, and accessible in nature so that both beginners who are just trying special effects for the first time during Halloween or the learning special effects artists can benefit from. I'm hoping these will give you lots of ideas to mix and match, and then the neon aspect is just to mix it up a bit from the ordinary and have some fun. Let's get to it. Please pardon the wet hair, I just got out of the shower because I'd like to be clean in order to get filthy. Also crash course for what's going on with my eyebrows right now, I have them, they're just blonde. That's it. That's literally all that's going on. Deal with it. And anyway, to the makeup. As some of you know, perhaps the hard way, there are a lot of people allergic to latex. So we are starting this tutorial with an alternative method for those of you who are sensitive or allergic to latex. These are called prosthetic transfers, and they are generally made of adhesive like Prosade, Bondo, etc. They're extremely easy to use, and they're also very easy to find in Halloween stores around this time of year. So I thought this would be a little more accessible to you guys. And what makes them so easy to apply is if you know how to apply a temporary tattoo, you can apply these things. But for those of you who have never put on a temporary tattoo in your life, here's the rundown of how these work. You want to peel this top clear layer off that has the prosthetics on it, and then you're going to flip it directly over and put it back down on that white paper that it came on, glossy side up. But make sure you don't get too close to the paper before you're ready to lay it down because these things are very sticky. See? Don't do that. Lay it down on the paper. Push down and make sure that it's making good contact with it, and then you're just going to cut them out until you have all the separate pieces ready to go. Figure out where you want to place them on your face. Then you're going to peel back the clear layer, which exposes the bottom half of the prosthetic. And then you're going to stick that to your face and push down a little bit. Then tattoo style, take a wet paper towel and wet the back of the paper. When it starts to feel slippery, it should easily peel right off, leaving you with a brand new set of blisters. Mm. Put those all over your face until you look like you're ready for a hot date. Oh yeah. Sexy. And if you need to, you can take 99% alcohol to dissolve some of these edges as well. Just make sure that when you do, you use a clean brush to do it. And then in case you've already forgotten, these things are extremely sticky because they're made of adhesive, so you want to powder the hell out of these. I'm using a translucent powder, any kind will do. You can also use baby powder. Now for all my people who either can't find these transfers or would still like a latex option, here it is for you. It's very, very similar to how we built the pink neon zombie. Put down a light coat of latex first where you're going to be applying your boil. And then we're going to take cotton just like before, but the only difference this time is you kind of want to roll it up into a little ring o ball and then sit it down on the latex. Cover that in latex as per usual. And a reminder that the quicker you can get this covered in latex, usually the easier it is to work with. And then I usually like to grab a palette knife or something similar like a popsicle stick to pull out little pieces from the inside of it and sculpt it and shape it and do all those fun things that latex can do. The reason that I use a ring for this kind of technique is because I think that it makes a really gross sunken in or open kind of blister, but you can just use a regular little ball of cotton instead if you want them to be whole blisters. Along with these open blisters, I do several of the regular blisters alongside of them all over the face. As usual, try not to neglect the neck unless you're going to be wearing a turtleneck for Halloween, which you might be. Then using this neon orange, which looks not that neon on camera, but trust me it is, Krylon Aqua Paint, I'm going to paint my entire face, neck, and chest. I'm really starting to look like Nickelodeon here. You'll see I avoided the cotton and latex areas and that was mostly just because they weren't dry yet. But it doesn't really matter if you paint over them or not because the aqua paints can build on top of each other. Then as if the orange wasn't enough, I started channeling the slime of Nickelodeon by choosing green for the blisters. The same thing that applied to the neon pink zombie applies to this one. You don't have to paint it orange and green. You don't even have to paint it bright colors. You can do this in very realistic colors and it would be sick nasty. These neon colors don't really translate well into injuries, but doing the neon is a good way to do a really gory look without it looking so gory that other people are uncomfortable. But if you do want to make people uncomfortable, I would paint these normal colors Here's an example of me using the exact same technique with the cotton and latex, but painted quote unquote normal colors, and it looks like this. Super gross. But you have lots of options, yay. 
Then I used purple to go inside of all of the open boils to create some depth, and then I also used it on the outside of every single blister and boil to give it kind of like a spreading, infected look. How I'm doing that is I'm adding little veins with a tiny brush, or I'm just pulling from the edge out away from the boil, keeping the brush wet, and it will kind of create this two-tone texture as it thins out the makeup as you keep pulling away from it. It's a little hard to explain, but you can kind of see what's happening here. Another way to thin it out would be to use your finger and pat it before it dries, which is the same thing that I do with alcohol paints and in like a million other looks. So it's a useful tip to use over and over again. Then I am taking this matte purple eyeshadow from the Sugar Pill Pro Palette, and I'm going to go around the outside of the blisters once again with this to kind of set it and to make it more vibrant. For the eyes, I'm just taking a matte orange shadow and I'm sweeping it all over the crease. This also helps me set my eyelids so that you don't get that awkward crease that constantly happens with aqua paints. But nothing fancy going on here. Add a sassy purple lipstick. Give yourself a cat eye. Really just do whatever you want to take your zombie to a zombie. Personally, no zombie is complete for me without lashes. And now for the messy part. This is Kryolan's faux pus, which Makes me laugh because it's kind of like faux pas, but it's faux pas. You get it? You get it? Oh. Anyway, it's gross looking, but it smells really minty. Then using a Q-tip, I am just smothering the blisters in pus. There's no rhyme or reason to this. It's pus. If you cannot find Krylon's faux pus, you can also buy anything else that looks similar, or you could probably figure out a way to make some yourself by using maybe a mix of like glycerin, petroleum jelly and yellow food coloring. That's just off the top of my head though. I don't know if that actually works. If anyone tries that and it turns out good, let me know down in the comments, or if you already have an awesome recipe for fake pus just lying around, leave it down in the comments as well. Then I'm taking green blood, which is just as easy to make as red blood, your average corn syrup and food coloring recipe. And I'm going to drip that from all of my open wound blisters as well. I'm also either using my finger or a cotton ball to kind of break up some of the blood in places because I didn't want it to look too clean. This zombie has seen some shit and she needs to look like it. Then it just didn't feel right to do this diseased, infected look without using the most deadly, infectious, diseased makeup product of all. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The green glitter. If you're new here and you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, just, it's probably better you don't know. Your life is simpler, just trust me. I'm shaking my head because it's already all over the place. I don't know what it is about this specific glitter, but it is so hard to get rid of. Anyway, I'm putting this nuclear bomb proof glitter all up in my blisters. If you're going for a more realistic approach to this look and you're painting it normal colors, I would definitely say skip the glitter. Heck, you know, I would probably say skip the glitter anyway. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I don't know. <sighs> Seven more years of bad glitter. Now it's time for the wig and the contacts. No zombie is complete without those. Congratulations, you are now a walking billboard for Nickelodeon. Or you're a diseased Oompa Loompa. Or you're a rotting pumpkin. Or you're just a neon zombie trying to get by in this world. I feel you, girl. Or boy, I feel you. Testing, one, two, three. Mm. Where are you now when I need ya? <laughs> I sound like a dying dog. Are those Babies. even the words? I don't know. I probably don't even know the words. Sorry, believers. What's your favorite kind of pizza face? Pizza? Yeah, what's your favorite flavor of pizza? You said pizza face. <laughs> what are you trying to say? What was your inspiration for this look? My childhood. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's a part of life. Don't feel bad if you have acne. So... <laughs> Ew. It smells minty! No! I wonder if this is edible, because it, I mean, it smells like it belongs in your mouth. <laughs> that sounds... that's what you said. It smells like toothpaste. What? <laughs> You would never say that. Seriously, you should smell this. Smell my finger. Knock <laughs> uh, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's that? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? 